What is happening, fish freaks? This is Dave from AD Walk Escaping. Today we're going to be talking about flow, the importance of flow in your planet tank, and we're going to be talking a little bit about filtration and just the recommended levels for flow and filtration and why they matter in your planet tank. I've had a lot of questions about this, so let's just go ahead and start with filtration. I'm not going to get into the filter types or the filter media. We're just going to be talking about flow. The reason you want to have high flow in a planted tank isn't necessarily to get better filtration. It's just to help move more water around to clear up some of the detritus, to get the detritus off the st off the stems, off the leaves, off the mosses, to you know clear up the water, reduce the turbidity in the water, um, and as well to physically move the nutrients around and the CO2 around so they can physically get in contact with the plant leaves which will just make it easier for the plants. It's going to make them happier, of course, because the nutrient will be readily available. It's in close proximity. Um, a lot of these things aren't necessarily absorbed. They're adsorbed. I mean, depends. But my whole point is you got the nutrients right there. You got the CO2. It's going to make it easier for the plants. Um, and a comparison to this in the wild is the University of Florida is like the four front of aquatic plant research in the world and they go to healthy ponds not ponds that are you know laden with agricultural runoff but healthy ponds and they find that in the exact same pond the only correlation they can find between an area in the pond that has algae and an area in the pond that has plants is flow now a lot of people think oh it's because the flow kills the algae not really you can have algae in a high flow area what's going on is it's kind of a, a snowball effect what they found is say a plant sprouts up the physical presence of the plant will make the turbidity or just the particles in the water hit the plant they fall to the substrate and it just makes that little bubble where the plant is at a little bit clear it gets a little bit more sunlight and it just grows it's a snowball effect and so that's the only correlation they've even found is that the stems of the plants will actually make the particles in the water physically hit the stem they fall down to the substrate and it just gives the plants basically more of an advantage. And it seems kind of crazy, but, you know, I'll put a study in the link and you can decide for yourself if you think this really makes sense or not. In the planted aquarium, it's a little bit different, but it's somewhat of the same concept. We want to have the flow to get the nutrients and the CO2 in close proximity to the leaves. But at the same time, you're wanting, you're wanting to clean up that detritus. You're wanting to keep... Uh, the water clear. I mean, that's one of the reasons we have filtration for mechanical filtration. Um, you know, some evidence suggests that having lower flow is better for microbial beds and everything like that. Um, and so we're not doing the high flow to get necessarily better biofiltration. We're just doing it to help clear up the water and make sure the nutrients are in close proximity to the plants, basically. So it really is that simple. Um, recommended levels for filtration are usually five times the total volume of your tank per hour. So this tank is 40 gallons. Um, my filter is actually doing over five times. It does about 250 to 300. I think, I think it's rated for 300, but usually they're a little bit lower. So 250 to 300 gallons per hour. Um, and for total water movement in the tank, which includes filtration and power heads or wave makers, it's usually recommended that you want 10 times the total volume per hour, either in a planet tank or like an African cichlid tank, um, just to you know help clear up the detritus, help move the nutrients around. And so I'm over that. I'm almost, I think, 20 times. Um, the tank's 40 gallon. The filter's two, 250 to 300 gallons per hour, and the wave maker is rated at 425 gallons per hour. Now, the wave maker doesn't seem like it because it doesn't shoot out a direct stream like a power head. It's more just oscillating the water around, but it is moving that much water um, through the tank, which, you know, it does really help. Um, here in a minute, you can see I'll have, um, you know, a couple clips. You'll see the current, how much current I have. And so I do have some agitation on the surface, not a lot. It's not breaking the surface. It's not creating you know, splashes or anything like that, but it is a pretty good wave, and you'll see that here in a minute just to give you an idea. And so let's move over to the power head. This is a good segue into power heads and into wave makers. Um, people were asking me, what about the configurations? So now we know you want at least five times the total volume per hour with filtration and at least ten times the total volume per hour for total water movement in your tank. Now, these are just my opinions, my guidelines, advice that 
veteran hobbyists have given to me and I've taken it to heart and it works great for me. Now when it's coming when it comes to power heads, you can place them strategically in different areas um, for two main reasons. One reason you may want to put a power head in a certain area so your stem plants look attractive, so they look aesthetic to you. A lot of us, if we put a power head in the back corner of our tank, you know, your valisneria might go like this, or your stem stem plants might get all blown around. And when you look at it, you're thinking that's too much flow, but it it doesn't look attractive. And if I take the flow away, it seems like my tank isn't as healthy, so I want the flow. What you can do is you can mess with the placement of your power head to get the plants to stay in a specific area and how you want them to look. So that reason would be an aesthetic reason. Um, but the other reason would be more uh, practical for mechanical filtration like we were talking about before. There's two main ways people will set up their power heads in relation to their filter. So the way I have mine set up right now is you could call it the vortex or the gyre method where you have the outtake of the filter in one of the back corners and you have the wave maker or the power head in the other back corner and you aim them into the middle so right now I have my filter you know aiming into the middle then I have my wave maker aiming into the middle and it creates that gyre the vortex and it really mixes up the co2 mixes up the nutrients makes sure makes so not tons of detritus and particles get all caught in the canyon and on the mosses and everything like that Another one, depending on what kind of plants you have, if they're stem plants or whatever, another method that you can do is just the big circular configuration. And you've seen that in some of my tanks. Uh, one example would be you have the filter in the back left corner like I have mine, and it's shooting maybe straight across or not so much into the middle. Maybe you can have it shooting about you know 45 degrees into the middle, but then you have a power head instead of in the back aiming at the same angle, like instead of both of them aiming at 45 degrees, you have the power head just shooting straight across. And what that, that'll do is create a big, huge circular motion that goes throughout the entire tank. And depending on what kind of tank you have, you know, if you have like a big slope and a big hillside, and maybe there's a dead spot down here, like you have this big slope, like remember my, my old tank, the last one that was like that? Well, because I had this big slope right here, you know, there's kind of a dead spot that would collect right here. And so you may want to have a big circular motion that goes around the entire tank to pick up some detritus. And one isn't better than the other. It really just depends on what you notice. If you see the vortex one is picking up more of that detritus in your dead spot, use it. If you see that your plants seem to be healthier or the tank seems to be healthier, maybe... Um, you know, the algae is subsiding when you use the vortex and it also looks attractive, then use it. In another setup, you may need to use the big circular configuration to pick up the detritus and yada, yada, yada. So that's basically it, guys. These are just some quick guidelines to help you out. People wanted me to answer, you know, what do I mean by flow? Why is flow important? And how do I set up, you know, power head uh, to filtration configurations? And that's basically it. I let my power heads just run 24-7. And that's it, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, and real quick, if anyone else has any advice, go ahead and shoot it out in the comments. Let us know what kind of configurations you use, what works for you. These are just a couple examples. Until next time, keep your sleeves wet.